Welcome to part 75 on the BCS and use Blender 2.7. In this video, we're going to be creating Fire. Fire is a physics simulation on Blender, and we're going to go through all the steps that you need to create Fire exactly like the Fire that's on the screen right now, which is simply emitting from a circle uh, in the 3D space. So let's go ahead and dive in. Before I do that, though, I just want to recognize all of my subscribers and people who comment on my videos. Uh, there have now been 75, in fact, 76 of them in this tutorial series. Thank you for all of your comments and suggestions and tips and help to other commenters on my videos. Uh, I would not be at this point in my channel if it were not for you. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click on that like button and that subscribe button if you learned something in this video and if you'd like to see more videos just like this one in Blender and in Tech. I post videos usually at least once or twice per week in Blender and in Tech. And go ahead and check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash borncg. On that page, I post what I'm up to uh, on my channel and I give previews and post kind of my test renders that I'm doing before I actually post any of these tutorials. So let's go ahead and jump in and start creating the fire. I'm gonna click on my splash screen to get rid of it. I've already gone ahead and turned on the screencast key so you can see what keys I'm pressing and what mouse buttons I'm pressing most of the time in Blender. I'm gonna start emitting my fire from a flat circle in my world. So let's go ahead and zoom in and I have my cube selected, I'll press X on my keyboard and click on delete to get rid of it. I'll press shift A and I'm gonna add a mesh uh, circle. Now when you add a circle, it does not have a face and we need to start emitting fire from the face of the circle. So I have to go into edit mode with the tab key on your keyboard, of course, and it already has all of the vertices selected in that. So all I have to do now is press F and that will fill in, the F key fills in um, a loop or a square or a polygon of a selected number of vertices or edges that you have selected. Let's go and press tab to go back into object mode. When you want to start creating fire, you need actually two objects. You need an object that fire is going to be coming off of, in this case the circle, and you need a domain object. Because this is basically a physics-y, particle-y kind of uh, thing that we're creating, it's not really particles, we're not ever going to go into the particle tab uh, in the properties window in this video, uh, but it is sort of like a particle particle simulation, uh, we need an area to constrain the simulation to, so it's not just happening in the entire universe in our 3D viewport. So I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard, and in this case I'm just going to add the most simple domain object I can. I'm going to add a cube, so there we go. Um, I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe mode, and I'm going to press the 5 key on my keyboard. Uh, on my numpad specifically, that will go into my orthographic view from perspective, that's perspective, that's orthographic. And now I'll press 1 to go to my front view, and you can see that this cube is kind of just taking up the exact same width as the circle. I want it to be bigger uh, by quite a bit. So I'm going to select it with my right mouse button, of course, and I'll tap S to scale that up a little bit. I'm going to make it about... Mm, that much wider. I'm going to move it up because the fire is not going to go too far down. Um, it's going to be mostly up. And I want this to be quite a bit of a taller box. In fact, I'm going to tap S again to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. I'll go into face select mode, grab the top face by right clicking on it, of course, and I'll drag it straight up and I'll go back to my front view so we can kind of see what's happening here. There is my little round circle down there and that's about the size that I want. In fact, maybe a little bit shorter and maybe I'll tap S and then shift Z on my keyboard. When you tap S and then shift Z, you can scale, but it negates the Z axis, so it only scales it on X and Y. So there we go. That's a nice big domain. The next thing I want to do is turn on my smoke simulation under the physics tab in the properties window. So I'll go to that physics tab, it looks like a little bouncing ball. And with my domain selected, I'm going to go and enable, yes, it is smoke, it is not fire, but yes, we will be creating fire in this tutorial, but you have to just enable smoke. And then we want this object, we have four options none, domain, flow, and collision. We're going to make this uh, object a domain object. The circle, I'll do the same thing on the physics tab, smoke, and this one we want to be a flow object. We want fire to flow off of this object. Now the flow type is not just going to be smoke, we're going to use fire. Yes, there is a fire and smoke option, but actually you get fire and smoke from the fire alone a flow type. Uh, fire and smoke, I, th I think I've never actually really used it very much, but what it does I believe is uh, emit fire and smoke from the same object, whereas fire kind of turns into smoke um, as it progresses up and the, and the flame dies out, it turns then into smoke uh, for the most part. So we'll be using fire. When you add that, 
and you go and you press the play button in your timeline or you press alt a on your keyboard you will get a very basic looking fire with some very basic looking smoke now one thing i forgot to do in this video i promised i would do it uh, is i did not change my render engine to cycles this is very important everything we do from this point forward pretty much is going to rely on us being switched not from blender render but over to cycles render very important do not forget that that's the most common problem that um, beginners run into is they do not see what I am showing them on their screen because they have not changed this up top. So now I've changed this to Cycles Render and I can go maybe a little bit into my timeline. In fact, I'm gonna simulate um, the smoke or fire simulation. Before I do that though, I'm gonna switch the end of my timeline to only 100 frames because uh, that is all we need for the sake of this tutorial. Um, over here under the bouncing ball tab, most of the settings for our fire and smoke are actually not on the emitter object or the flow object. They are on the domain object. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the smoke cache section. I have most of these sections collapsed. I would if I were you as well, so if they're all kind of expanded, collapse them. I'm gonna go down to the smoke uh, cache section, and I actually cannot click on this bake button until I save this Blender file, but it's actually gonna save separate simulation files um, in the same directory or same folder as your Blender file, so it needs to know where you're saving your file before it can start actually making those simulation files when you click on bake, which actually makes the smoke simulation permanent. So I'm gonna go ahead up to file and save as. I'll just go to my desktop. I'm gonna call this fire dash 75-001. Still can't believe that it's the 75th tutorial in this tutorial series, but time flies when you're having fun. So as you can see now, when you save your file, you then get access to the smoke cache section. And now if I click on bake, and it's important at this point to actually have your uh, playhead, the green bar at frame zero or frame one, um, I can click on bake now. And I actually just sped that up because as we go ahead and change some of these settings, baking is gonna take maybe a little bit of time, very quick, that only took a few seconds, but the more we add, the higher resolution we make the smoke and fire simulation, the longer it will take to bake. And yes, when you bake a simulation and you have all the settings the way you want, it could take many, many minutes, even hours to simulate a fire and smoke simulation. I've just baked this simulation, that's why this dark bar is at the bottom of my timeline when I have the domain selected. If I have the flow object, it's not there, so it's only when the domain object is there. And this little dark dark bar means the cache. And I actually forgot to change the end of my simulation to 100 right there. So I think it actually might have simulated all the way to 250, which is unnecessary. But let's go ahead and press Alt A to see what this has done. We're only gonna watch the first 100 frames and we see some very basic smoke. Let's go ahead and render it out. So I'll press escape. I'll go to a nice frame. Let's say frame 72, sure. I'll go to the camera tab. In fact, I'll press zero to look through my camera. I'm gonna zoom it out. Actually, I need to check this locked camera to view button right there under the view heading in my properties panel right there. So now I can actually uh, manipulate the camera with my mouse by orbiting and zooming by scrolling. So I think the camera should go right about that's okay. Let's go and do a quick render. I'll go to the camera tab. We've got cycles render set up. I'll click on render and we have nothing. We have nothing because we had to actually set up fire materials. I'm gonna go ahead and press escape. Actually, what we're seeing here is the box that we made for our domain. Uh, that's still visible. It doesn't look like smoke because we have to actually set up the materials that we want our smoke and fire to look like. Right now, what we're seeing in the viewport is just an approximation of what fire might look like, but this visualization of the smoke and fire does not represent the colors that we give the fire or the smoke or the lighting or anything like that. This is just a very rough approximation. We can make our fire green if we want to, but it would not show up in this viewport unless we went over to viewport shading and rendered. But as you can see, we don't see anything except for that cube yet. Let's go back to viewport shading material. And I'm gonna split this larger 3D viewport window into two. So I'll grab this little triangle area up here, I'll left click and drag it straight down. I'm gonna change this top window into a node editor window down here. I'll click there and go to node editor. Of course, if you're used to the cycles render engine, which will be very handy for this video, um, you'll know that this is how in the node editor window, this is how we add materials to objects. I'm gonna select the um, circle object and I'm gonna go to the materials tab in the properties window. This circle can have its own material. It can be a green disc that's emitting uh, fire. So I'm gonna do that actually. I'm gonna click on new uh, with that circle selected. We're gonna make just a basic diffuse material. I'll change it to green. Great, we have a green disc that's on fire. But where do we actually put the fire and smoke materials? 
what is the fire going to look like? What material is the fire going to have? Well, that material actually goes on the domain object, which is a little bit funny, but that's just the way it is. Let's go ahead and select the domain object. I'll click on new under the material tab right there. We have a diffuse node and a material output node. I'm going to go ahead and select the diffuse node and delete it because this is where we're going to have to create a fairly complicated, it's not too bad though, I promise, node setup in order to create materials for both fire and smoke. Let's start off by bringing in a few attributes. When you create a fire and smoke simulation, that actually comes with, because you have a domain and you've enabled physics over here, that comes with a few properties that it knows about because you have this simulation. In order to bring one of the attributes from this fire simulation into the node editor window, I'm going to press Shift A to bring up the add menu. I'm going to go to input and attribute. Now these attributes have specific names and the first attribute that we're going to enter in and we have to enter this in exactly is called density. And basically what density describes is where the smoke is in the domain. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that attribute node. So shift D on my keyboard and move it down here. I'm going to rename the, the attribute in that little box to flame. So we have uh, two of the three attributes that we're going to need. The third attribute I'll need, so I'll duplicate this one again, shift D and put it up here, is called color, C-O-L-O-R. We're spelling color in the American way with no U, by the way, just in case you're outside of the United States. The next two nodes we're going to add are for the smoke because there are two smoke properties, volume scatter and volume absorption. So let's go ahead and add those two notes. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard. They are under shader and they're at the bottom. So you always can know where they are. Volume scatter, I'll put that one on the top and shift A, shader, volume absorption. I'll put that one on the bottom. We're gonna connect up the factor of the density to the density of volume scatter and the density of volume absorption. You might wanna pause the video at this point if you're following along with me and just copy what I'm doing as I'm going along. Let's go ahead and add these two nodes together with an add shader. So I'm going to press shift A, I'll go to shader, add shader. Do not use mix shader in this case, it will not work as well. Um, whereas mix shader is right there, we're not using that one. We normally use that one, but we're not. Let's go ahead and add an add shader. I'll put it right about there. I'm going to add those two shaders together just like that. And I'm going to connect this add shader up to the volume of the material output. Yes, we're using volume and not surface because fire and smoke are not solid objects. We're going to be giving the material to the volume that comes from the density and the flame, the area where the flame is in our smoke and fire simulation. Let's go ahead and look at our fire right now. That comes from the flame attribute. I'm going to go ahead and press shift A on my keyboard and set this point that we need to describe the color of the fire and as you know fire is not just one color it starts at white in the very middle and it goes to orange and yellow and it goes to the very edge of the fire normally it's a almost red or dark orange color so I'm gonna press shift a on my keyboard to add multiple colors in a node you need to go to the converter section and you're gonna select color ramp I'm not really sure why color ramp is in the converter section and not in the color section but that's just the way that it is so I'm gonna select color ramp right there we'll put it right about there next to the flame we'll connect up the factor of the flame not the color to the factor of the color ramp um, and that's because or at least you can tell why this is because of the colors of these little ports we're always connecting similar color ports so gray to gray yellow to yellow and green to green so there's no yellow one here that's why we're not using this port right here let's go ahead and describe the color of the fire and this is going to go from coldest on the left to hottest on the right so the coldest that fire can be actually needs to be black this value cannot change if you change it you're going to be changing your entire scene or at least everything inside of your domain so we're going to leave it but i'm going to add some more points because this white is already pretty much correct I'll click on the plus I'm gonna make a red color so the way you select these points is you actually have to click and zoom quite far in in this little triangle area I find that works the best if you click in the square or rectangle part it doesn't work quite as well especially if you're zoomed out so I'm gonna make this um, point into a red color I'll select a bright uh, ready orangey color maybe just like that and I can move this over so it's almost at the black and there's very little room between them. That's important. I'll press the plus again. It adds one to the left of the last uh, point you had selected. So I'll drag this one over. I'll change its color to an orangey color. Uh, maybe kind of like, maybe not quite as intense as the orangey red, but maybe just like 
that. I'm going to press the plus button again. I'm going to slide this one over and we're going to make this one into a light yellowy color. So I'll drag the, the brightness up and make that one just like that. You can play around with these values a whole lot to get the result that you like, but I think I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and zoom back out by scrolling down. And I'm going to create another node here, so I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. Just like with the density of the smoke, eventually we have to get to a shader. In this case, we are using an add shader because volume scatter and volume absorption output uh, green shader ports. We're going to actually make an emission shader because fire emits light. And so the shader for that is emission right there under shader. And I'll put it right there. I'm going to connect up the color to this emission color. So now these colors will be emitted by the emission shader. But this stream strength of one is not going to be high enough. So I'm actually going to connect the factor of the flame to the strength right there. And I'm going to move this down so we can kind of see that noodle a bit better. But we might want to adjust this strength value later. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add in a converter and math node. I'm going to put that right in the middle of that noodle. I'll orbit down so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to change add to multiply. And what this node will do is allow us to change the factor by multiples of whatever value we want. So we're actually multiplying the brightness of the fire by any value we want. If we enter in two there, we're making the fire brightness twice as bright. If we type in 10, we're making the value of the fire or the brightness of the fire 10 times as bright and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and connect up this emission shader to the material output. And then we're gonna do that is we're not gonna use a mix shader. We're gonna use an add shader again. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one. I'll select that one, shift D, duplicate. I'll put it in the middle of this noodle and I'll connect these ones up. So the fire is on the bottom and we're almost done here. What I might wanna do here though, is I might wanna be able to adjust the volume of the smoke in my scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this density attribute over. I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna left click and drag straight down uh, between those two noodles. And what that will do if I hold shift and left click and drag straight down through those is it will connect them up using one of these, um, I forget what they're called, divider little nodes. So now I'll press shift A I'm going to add another math node in the middle of a single noodle, which will therefore affect both the volume scatter and the volume absorption. This math node is going to be used in the exact same way as the math node down here. We're going to change it to multiply, and therefore we can turn up the amount of smoke if we want, and I would generally recommend that. I'm going to turn my smoke to maybe 1.5 and press enter. The last thing we have to do here is change the color of the smoke. And I brought in this color attribute, not because we're actually going to use it, but because if you want to make just a smoke simulation, in other words, if you select your emitter object or your flow object, and instead of using, and I'm going to actually free the bake of my simulation, if you want your flow object, which is right there, I have to select it, it's a little bit hard. If you want it to be a smoke only simulation, you might actually use uh, this color attribute because when you're simulating smoke, you can actually set the color over here in the properties window with that flow object selected, I believe. We're not gonna use this color attribute though, so I'll just move it over and I'll delete it later. I'm gonna press Shift A on my keyboard. We're gonna input an RGB red, green, blue value for color. And I'm gonna connect up the color to both the color of the volume scatter and the volume absorption. But of course, we might want to adjust the value of the color later, especially the intensity of the color of the smoke. So again, I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and left click and drag through these two noodles to connect them up. I'll move that little one by right clicking and dragging uh, to a bit closer there. So in this part of the noodle, I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to go to color. I'm going to add in a hue saturation uh, node and put it right there. And what you will want to do is you will want to crank up the value of the hue saturation to maybe about 25 or 30. That will make your smoke look a whole lot better later on. Just trust me on that one. At this point, I'm going to get rid of this attribute color. So I'll select it, click X to get rid of it. And I think at this point, we are pretty much done our node setup for fire and smoke. At the end of this video, I promise I'll put this up on the screen, uh, full screen for you to see. Again, that'll be at the very end of this video. Let's go ahead and move on to the settings of our fire and smoke simulation. So I'm going to make my 3D viewport window uh, big again, and I'll turn off lock camera to view and zoom in. 
By the way, I should mention that I do realize that in Blender there actually is a quick fire and quick smoke setting in Blender that will actually create a domain for you and create many of these nodes for you. Uh, but I believe in creating um, the nodes for yourself, at least when you're getting started, so that you understand what's going on and how to edit it and how to manipulate things like the amount of smoke and what smoke actually looks like. That's why I took you through the process of creating your own domain and adding your own physics simulation to it and adding your own materials because I believe it's important to be able to edit uh, all of these things manually and know what they actually do instead of just using a quick setting. That's why I did that. I know I'll get some comments. Why didn't you use the quick settings? That's why I'm mentioning it now in this video. But let's go ahead and jump back over here into the properties window where we're going to be setting up all the settings for your fire simulation. And it's over here in the properties window under the physics tab for the most part where the devil really is in the details. I'm going to go ahead and go back to frame zero and press alt A on my keyboard to re-simulate this very low resolution simulation. And as you can see, we sort of have a realistic fire, at least in the 3D viewport, but it's very, very, very low resolution. And one of the big problems here is that it sort of looks like this circle is a giant puddle of gasoline and so we're getting a really intense fire it sort of looks like a blob of fire we want instead a bunch of points of fire and that flickers all over the place uh, above the circle so let's go ahead and jump in i'll press escape on my keyboard the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in on that green circle and i'm going to give it a texture what that means is i'm going to go over to this texture checkerboard tab in the properties window and i'm going to click on new i don't want this texture should be an image or movie though instead i'm going to use a cloud texture what this texture is actually going to describe is where the fire is coming from well, i don't know what happened there where the fire is coming from on the surface of this circle right now we saw a big blob of fire coming off of it well that's because fire is constantly coming from the entire surface what a cloud texture is going to actually say is that where the dark areas are is where fire is not going to come from now if we make a cloud and i'm actually going to open up the color section below it and i'm going to turn down the brightness of this a little bit maybe to 0 0.7 or so i'm going to make these clouds much smaller so i'll turn the size down to maybe 0. 0, uh, 0.07 or 0 0.08 or so and I'm going to turn the contrast down a little bit and so now we have sort of a very dull very small cloud texture so I'm going to add this texture which I'll actually give a name first I'll call it fire clouds and I'll press enter I'm going to go back to the physics tab with the circle selected and I'm going to go to smoke flow advanced. I'm going to click on use texture and select that fire clouds texture. So now if I press alt a to simulate and I actually look at the fire, it is no longer emitting from the entire surface. It's still very blob like and it got a lot shorter, but now it's emitting from different spots on the surface. Again, this is very hard to see because we're still using a low resolution simulation. What I will want to do here is I will want to animate this offset value. And what that will do is it'll actually animate where the dark and light sections are um, on the circle. Um, so what you want to do here is maybe go to frame zero. I'm going to insert a keyframe here. And if you don't know how to do that, what you can do in any one of or almost any one of Blender's little value boxes, like any of these little um, boxes that have a number in it, you can right click in any one of them and say insert keyframe. So that's what we're actually going to do here uh, with this offset value on frame zero. So right click insert keyframe and then in order to make animation happen uh, we need to go to a later keyframe in this case we're going to go to frame 100 and i'm going to change this offset value to about four or five i'm going to say four and i'll press enter and then i'll right click again and say insert keyframe and as you can see you can also clear keyframes as well just the same way so now we have about 100 frames with a offset animation of a value of four between zero and four and that's about the ratio that you might want you can play with that value all you want but you won't want to enter in something like a hundred because that'll just be way too fast and way too flickery most likely but there is a problem here with this animation whenever you insert keyframes in blender there is an interpolation type uh, that Blender automatically adds. This is not going to be a constant speed animation of the flickering. It's going to start off with a slower flicker and then it's, it's going to speed up and be fastest in the very middle and then it's going to be slow again at the end. That's called ease in and ease out and that's because of the interpolation type Bezier. If you've watched any of my previous videos on how to do animation, you'll know that when you create animation, you have to change your interpolation type from Bezier to linear. So I'm going to make this timeline a little bit taller. I'm going to divide it into two. 
I'm going to change the top window type into a dope sheet window where we can actually edit those keyframes. And with those two keyframes selected, they are, but I can press A a few times to select them. I'm going to press T on my keyboard. T will bring up this set keyframe interpolation. I'm going to select linear. And once we do that, if I go through and actually watch the flickering, you'll see that they are happening at a constant rate. They're not speeding up or slowing down. So that's what I want. I'm going to get rid of this window now. I'll just join those two windows back by dragging up the little triangle area up into the top one, and I'll drag the edge back down. Great. It's now time to adjust all those little details to do with the fire simulation and how detailed it is and the speed of the fire and all those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and select the domain of our fire simulation again. And I'll go over to the properties window to the physics tab. And the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna enable smoke adaptive domain and smoke high resolution. What the adaptive domain means is that we have a very large area, a very large size box with a lot of volume that our physics simulation needs to happen in. Now, that's not very efficient because our fire starts off very small and might not go all the way to the edges of this box. So what an adaptive domain means is that when I now simulate from the beginning, I'll press Alt-A. And as you can see now, we have a smaller box that started off right near the fire, and you can see it again, that actually expands out to how big it needs to be in order to fit that fire and smoke. And as you can see, the smoke is hitting the top of the larger domain because that's the absolute limits for this simulation as far as we made uh, this box when we started off. And having this smaller domain, at least in part of the simulation, is going to help speed up our simulation time, especially once we increase the smoke and fire resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and press escape. I'll put the playhead somewhere in the middle so we can kind of see what's going on here. Now what I'll do actually in the physics tab with the domain selected is I'm going to go through these sections one by one. We're going to start with smoke and we'll get down to smoke cache at the end, but for now I'll shrink that down. But let's go ahead and go up to the first section called smoke and open it up and take a look at what's in here. One of the most important values in your entire smoke simulation is right here. It's called divisions and right now it's set to 32, which is quite a low value, but we're going to leave it at 32 to until the very end of us customizing the way that our smoke looks. And that's because this is the value that when you crank it up to let's say 128 or 200 or even higher, that's when your computer is really gonna have to take a long time, as in many, many minutes or even many, many hours to simulate out your smoke simulation even before you render. So if I turn this up to 64, you're gonna see a huge slowdown in the calculation of the smoke simulation cache. So right now we'll just leave it at 32, but even at 32, you'll get an idea of what your smoke will look like. This time scale value uh, kind of helps to offset the scale of your scene if you didn't actually think about it at the beginning getting when you were creating these objects. We did not, and because by default Blender uses um, its own Blender units, and each one of these squares on your ground grid is actually basically one meter, which is about a yard, uh, by one meter or about a yard, uh, this is quite a big fire, like a bonfire. And if you didn't think about that, you can turn this number down or up. I believe it'll actually only go to 1.5. Yeah, that's about as high as it'll go. Even if you type in something higher, like 30, it's still goes back to 1.5 so you have some limitations here I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that at 1 and I actually think that might be the only thing that we might want to change in this window we'll come back to divisions later let's go ahead and collapse that section open up smoke flames there are some more important things here if I go through my simulation if I press alt a and you watch the fire you'll see that my fire is quite short I want to be much more spiky and the way I can change that is by changing this speed value that's a very misleading name I'll go ahead and press escape on my keyboard to stop that simulation but the speed value basically means how quickly the fire becomes smoke and this value might be a little bit different based on that definition that I just gave but um, you want to turn this value down to get higher flames I'm not exactly sure why that is but I'm gonna turn that value down to maybe 0.4 and press enter and now if I go ahead and go back to the beginning and press alt a to resimulate you'll see that I get more spikes on my fire I'll press escape on my keyboard to go back to frame zero though because there are a few other places where you can actually adjust the height of the flame and you'll see that later on once we get down into uh, smoke high resolution. The other value that I often change here is this smoke value.
value, and this determines how much smoke, not how much fire, is in your scene. If I turn this value up to, let's say, 5, and I re-simulate with Alt-A, you'll see that I get a lot more smoke in my simulation, again, um, but that will also be affected by your materials and this value that we set earlier on to make the smoke uh, look more intense uh, regardless of this value. If you want no smoke in your scene, which will actually speed up your simulation, I'm going to go ahead and turn that value down to zero. I'll press escape and I'll re-simulate. And as you can see now, all I have to deal with is fire, which will speed up my simulation. Let's go ahead and press escape because I'm going to go down to the next section. I only adjusted the speed and the smoke values in this section. Actually, I just noticed the smoke color value here. So if you don't want to use an RGB node right there, uh, if you want to use the attribute color that's where this comes from so you can actually select a smoke color here if you want to but this uh, solution is just as good so uh, there it is in case you want to use it let's go ahead and collapse this section and go to the smoke adaptive domain there's actually nothing to change here because all it does is create a smaller box inside of your domain as you know so let's go ahead and collapse that I'm gonna open up smoke high resolution and this is where you're gonna want to change a few things I'm gonna change my divisions this is the resolution of the noise that actually creates the ripples in the smoke. Um, if you turn this number up, yes, it will affect the amount of time it takes to uh, simulate your smoke before you even render, but it is worth it. So I will turn this out to maybe three or four. Uh, you can play around with that number to see what results you like. There are two noise methods and the Blender community is not really set on which one of these people like. It's really up to you. Uh, but what people have done I've often seen is turn the value of the strength up of the noise which affects both the fire and the smoke by the way the smoke high resolution will affect the fire and the smoke to a higher value like four or five or six so i'm going to change it actually to five and i'll press enter i don't really have a preference between wavelet or fft again that's one of those things that you can play around with and see which one you like i'm going to go ahead and switch it to fft for the sake of this tutorial though let's go ahead and re-simulate at this point i need to make sure my playhead is at frame zero and i'll press alt a on my keyboard you might find that blender might need to re-simulate or run through the uh, timeline once before you actually get this dark bar appearing so it might have to wait to go through the timeline twice and as you can see we have a more flickery fire. I'm going to go ahead and add smoke back into the simulation. So I'll open up uh, smoke flames and turn that smoke value back up to one and press enter. And as you can see, it's going to have to finish this uh, run through the timeline and then go back through. I'll speed this up. So the fire simulation is playing now. We're getting a little bit taller flames. Uh, we'll see why that is and how we can make the flames actually go higher and how we can make this look less blob-like in a moment. Um, and we have a fairly detailed uh, smoke simulation as well. Let's go ahead and press escape because now we're at the point where we want to change that very scary, very time-consuming divisions value back up in the first section called smoke. So I'll open that up. This divisions value is set to 32 right now. I'm going to change it up to 60 four and press enter I'll go back to frame zero I'm gonna press alt a but I'll speed up this part of the video and I'll let you know how long it took in just a moment All right, so I finished simulating out that 100 frame uh, fire simulation at 64 divisions, that's the resolution, and just that 100 frames took over six or seven or eight minutes to uh, calculate out. So now I have this dark bar, which is the cache of my simulation. What I wanna do at this point is actually go down to my smoke cache section, that's what this is for, and I'm gonna click on current cache to bake. What that does is it actually makes the fire simulation permanent, which means you're not gonna risk losing the fire simulation if you move your fire objects around or anything like that, uh, that would be okay. What you could alternatively do, I'll click on free bake, is before you even simulate, you could just go back to frame zero and come down here and click on bake and it'll automatically bake your simulation, which will again mean you'll have to wait for the simulation to happen, but then it'll automatically bake it once you click on bake, it'll simulate and then bake it for you. But in this case, I'll just click on current cache to bake since I just press alt A and waited for it to simulate manually. So let's go ahead and see what this simulation looks like. I've already uh, baked the simulation, so I'm not in risk of messing it up if I play so I'll press alt a on my keyboard now it's not going to re-simulate we'll just watch it and as you can see that's 
the flame result that we get. It's not even on my powerful computer, not even playing at full speed by any means, because you can see up here the frames per second is playing very, very slow. It should be 24 frames per second, but we're getting um, five at the very end because there is so much smoke and so much flames. But this is not even what the flames will look like in the end, because again, in the viewport, this is only an approximation of what we're gonna get in our final render. So I'm gonna go ahead and press escape. I'm gonna pick a random frame, and we're gonna do a render of our scene. I am using the Cycles Render Engine, so I will go to my camera tab and change my compute device from CPU to GPU, because I am using an NVIDIA graphics card and can use CUDA rendering. I'll put a link to that video up on the screen right now in case you have a video card that Blender can use to render much, much, much faster. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick lighting setup though because our smoke will look quite a bit better with a three-point lighting setup. So I'm gonna grab this single point light that we have by default in the scene. I'm gonna go to the lamp tab. I'm gonna make it into an area lamp. I'm gonna make it a square, not rectangular. I'm gonna make it size maybe uh, 10 and press enter. Maybe it's a bit too big, so maybe I'll make it seven or so. I'm gonna go to my top view. I'll put, and I'll find my camera. Where is the camera? Ah, uh, my camera is actually way out here. I had to pause the video and zoom out to find it. So I'm gonna move my light. I'm actually gonna have a couple of lights on the side of the fire that the camera is. So I'm gonna put one of these lights, maybe right about there, but point it, I rotate it towards the fire, and let's see how high it is. I gotta have to move it up. Uh, quite a bit higher there. I'm going to click on use nodes and we're going to make it have a strength of maybe about 1500 and I'll press enter. Let's go back to our top view with the seven key. I'm going to duplicate that lamp. So I'll press shift D. I'll move it right about there. I'll rotate it with the R key, of course. I'm going to make this lamp a little bit duller and be a thousand and press enter. I'll duplicate that lamp again. Shift D, put it right there. R to rotate put it right about there for a backlight, and I'll keep that one at about a thousand. So I've got a basic three-point lighting setup for our smoke for the most part. Let's go back through our camera view, and I'll zoom out so I can kind of see where the framing is. I will click on lock camera to view and zoom in a little bit more so we can see the fire a bit closer, right about there maybe, and I'm gonna save and then do a quick render, and we'll come back in just a sec, but in my time, it'll be several minutes. All right, so we have our render. Again, this is a very low sample render. I believe we are using the default, which is 120 render samples. That's why we're getting some fireflies and some grain in the render. Um, what I can do to fix that, of course, is I can go to my light path section, which is under the camera tab, and I can turn up filter glossy to something like two or three, and I can turn off reflective caustics and refractive caustics and see if that helps in my final render, as well as turning up my render samples to something like 500 or a thousand or something like that, which of course will take a long, long time to render. I think that my fire is too short still though, so I'm gonna go ahead and press escape. And because I've already baked the simulation onto the domain object in my scene, I have to select that domain object and go back to the physics tab and go back down to smoke cache and free my bake because I don't get access to any of the smoke or fire settings in the properties window until I free the bake. And unfortunately that means I will have to re-simulate if I wanna change any of these settings. I'm gonna change a few things here. Under smoke flames, I'm gonna change the smoke speed to a lower number which will mean a taller flame. So I'll change that from 0 0.4 to maybe 0 0.25. Sure, I'll use that value. I don't think I need quite as much smoke in my scene, and I think if I turn this value down, it might speed up my simulation, so I'll make it have half as much smoke. Great. There are also some settings that we can touch upon for the actual emitter or flow object. So I'm gonna select that little green circle. We've already added a texture to the circle, an animated texture on the circle. That's our clouds texture right there. We could play with this value and how much contrast there is. That will determine how much spottiness we have. And even having brighter areas might make parts of the flame taller and parts of the flame shorter, depending on how much contrast you have in this cloud image. Uh, but I'm gonna go back to the physical tab with that little circle selected and I think I don't want to change anything else here but let's go ahead and do a quick save and instead of just pressing alt a to run the simulation I'll go back to the physics tab with the domain object selected and I'm gonna click on bake and of course at this point I have to wait several minutes probably six or seven or eight minutes for this to happen so I'm gonna speed up this next part of the video 
All right, so our fire simulation is finished. It's been baked, so we're not at risk of losing it now. As you can see, our flames got a lot taller, and that's because of a few things. That's because of our increased resolution up to 64. Uh, that's also because I believe we changed some of the clouds texture to be brighter white with a higher contrast in this area. The white areas will emit more flame, I believe. And of course, also under the smoke flame section with your domain selected, the speed value, we changed it from 0 0.4 down to 0 0.25 that increased the height of the flames as well but of course nothing matters except how it looks when you render this out so i'm going to go up to the camera tab in the properties window and before i click on render though i want to show you that on my desktop next to my blender file and the dot blend one file which is just a backup of the blender file i have this blend cache folder that holds the simulation of the fire simulation and uh, this current resolution of just 64 this folder is 1.51 gigabytes in size. That's a really big file, especially if you want to put this on a thumb drive or email it to yourself. This is a huge amount of data for that fire and smoke simulation. If you change the resolution to even higher, if I go to the domain object, go to the physics tab, and change the divisions to something like 128 or 200, you might find yourself with a cache folder of upwards of 14 or 15 gigabytes, which I have seen before. So just be warned about that. Don't be doing this on a hard drive where you're almost out of space. It will not work. Let's go ahead and render under the camera tab. I'll click on render and we'll come back in just a moment. All right, so here's our render result. I'm quite happy with that. The flame looks quite good. Of course, if this were for a real production, I might go and free my bake and change my divisions up from 64 to again 128 or 200 or something like that. And then I would rebake, which again would take probably over an hour, probably even a few hours. And then I could see how my results got. In this case, I'm just gonna press escape to clear out of that render. And we're gonna play around with some of the nodes to make things look a little bit different or a little bit better so I'm going to actually turn off lock camera to view I will zoom in a little bit so we can see things a bit better and I'm gonna make my node editor window a bit bigger actually so we can see what's going on here that means I'll need to make that smaller on the screen let's go ahead and change the viewport to viewport shading rendered so it'll kind of render on the fly and I think my fire is too bright so what I might do over here in my nodes again I still have the domain selected at the big box in my scene selected I might change the multiply value for the flame strength that's the amount of emission that it's giving off to a lower value right now it's set to 10 I'll set it to 5 and press enter and as you can see we get less of that bright highlight area I might even try turning it down to something like 2 and you can see we get more orange and maybe that's what you want so you want to play around with that value the smoke in the scene is very very dense I can see a lot of smoke if I change my world background color to black which is where you would normally see fire at night you'll notice that Maybe you get different results than you thought you would get. Maybe you see too much smoke because at night you don't have uh, the smoke quite as illuminated. So I might turn the uh, value down on the color of my smoke. It's set to 25 right now. But if I go down to something like three or four and press enter, suddenly the smoke becomes a lot less visible. Of course, I'll turn that back up to 25. I can change the multiply value of my smoke from 1.5, which is more smoke than it had based on its own own density down to something like 0.2 as well and that would also take down the amount of smoke in my scene so again so as you can see there are many ways of adjusting your smoke and it's just sort of a process of getting used to the several settings that you have to get used to in the properties window and how to set up a texture and how to set up your nodes but that will be it for this video as promised I'll put the nodes full screen up uh, on my monitor right now and you can pause the video what i'll also do is i'll also throw this exact screenshot up on my facebook page at facebook.com slash born cg in fact by the time you see this i'll already have posted this uh screenshot uh to my facebook page uh thanks for watching if you like this video or you learned something go ahead and click on that like button below this video and click on subscribe to see more videos just like this one but that'll be it for this one thanks for watching Bye bye